Good morning. Good morning. Well, we're back after a yes. snow day last week, so um, all dug out and ready, ready, ready to, to look go. at the third Sunday after the Epiphany. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, mercifully look upon our infirmities and stretch forth the hand of your majesty to heal and defend us. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from Jonah chapter 3. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and call out against it the message that I tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, three days' journey in breadth. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's journey, and he called out, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They called for a fast and put on a sackcloth from the greatest of them to the least of them. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil way, God relented of the disaster that he had said he would do to them, and he did not do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson is from 1 Corinthians chapter 7. This is what I mean, brothers. The appointed time has grown very short. From now on, let those who have wives live as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no goods, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the gospel is from St. Mark chapter 1, verses 14 through 20. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Passing alongside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, the brother, of Sim the brother of Simon, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on a little farther, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who were in their boat, mending the nets. And immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants and followed him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, on this third Sunday of Epiphany, it's time to give a fishing report. Um, I don't know about you, but um, on Saturdays I tend to listen to, um, on the radio, if I'm out and about doing things, I listen to... Um, uh, Dumper Dan and the fishing oh, report. Oh, I've heard that. The fishing report on Lake Michigan. Yes. It's always kind of interesting to listen mm -hmm. to Dumper Dan as he talks to, um, uh, I forget the host of that show. And um, a member of our Dan church. is a member of our congregation. Yeah. Charter boats, check him out. <laughs> um, but he always reports on what's going on in, in, in Lake Michigan and the reports of fishing. And, and today, we, um, or this weekend, we have the, the call of the disciples. Um, and Jesus is simply. Uh, a simple mandate, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. I don't know about you, Pastor Mac, but um, I still recall vividly uh, the day that I became a, a fisher of, of men, so to speak, the day in which um, we received our call into the office of the Holy Ministry. Uh, for me, it was back in 1993, April 27th. For you, it was a few years before that. 1989. Right? Yep. Okay. Yeah. And I remember the thing at Fort Wayne that we had. We always had this little um, kind of ritual where we would go into the the the, the, um, the school uh, commons, the student commons, and mm -hmm. they'd have a big a big map up, and we'd throw darts at it to see who <laughs> could get closest to their uh, to their place where they were going to call be called to. And and I think I remember very clearly. Mine was someplace off of um, near in California. I think it was Northern California. I was never good at darts, um, but. I didn't end up anywhere near to that. Nope. Ended up in Vermilion, South Dakota. Um, you ended up in? In uh, Duquoin, Illinois. And I remember, you know, when I, they called my name and said the city, and they said, it's near Carbondale. I said, where's Carbondale? <laughs> <laughs> well, when I heard from Vermilion, South Dakota, I was like, where's Vermilion, South Dakota? And the guy sitting next to me, um, uh, 
Paul Beyer, I still remember him, he said, you'll be okay, the University of South Dakota is there, my wife went to medical school there. We had SIU there, and uh, yeah. I remember too, a guy got called the Gun Barrel Texas and everybody <laughs> laughed. <laughs> well, Fort Wayne always had Zap, North Dakota, Zap, yeah. yeah, so yeah. there were these places, but I don't know, when you first received that, that document, that, um, that call, that commission to go out, um, sort of felt like Jonah, a little bit kind of scared to death. Uh, about what was going to lie ahead, um, and our text, the Old Testament text, talks about about Jonah being called to that great city of Nineveh, which was a, a godless city. And, and I didn't know much about Nineveh, but I read a little bit about it this week that it was um, um, run by the Assyrians, and the Assyrians were really mean and and kind of horrible people. Um, and uh, Jonah, I think, knew that and. Obviously, he had different plans and decided to jump ship, so to speak. <laughs> and that's it's kind of interesting about the call process, right? Yeah. You, you have no choice in it. That just goes so countercultural when we're called right. out of the seminary. You yeah. just go where they send you, right? And I would have never picked DuCoin, Illinois, um, ever. Yeah. And yet, it was a great blessing. We stayed there almost nine years. Yeah. And I'll never forget when we visited. We uh, um, were walking down the street, and we didn't know anybody. And... And um, and uh, the uh, the post office guy says that uh, uh, are you Pastor Mac? And I'm like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> How did you know? <laughs> and you're the postman, and he said, well, I see you've already began to begin, you know, with mail and that kind of thing. I guess it was um, we had already um, bought a house, but we were looking around and walking around. That's um, how it was. But um, as I think back, and he said, well, I see you're a Packer fan. Um, <laughs> like, <laughs> I deliver your mail. So small town and uh, interesting where everybody knows everybody, which was totally different than what I was used to. Our, and the call was pretty simple when you think about it back to those days right out of the seminary. It was simply a follow me, you know, um, go out and this is the message you proclaim. And the message that uh, Jesus gave to his disciples was pretty simple, repent and believe the gospel. And notice it had nothing to do with where we wanted to go. It right. had nothing to do with our interests or, or whatever. It was really basically, it was from outside of us. So you're going here. Yeah. And that's, like I said, that's totally countercultural when you think about how focused on the inside we are. And, and, and this call to, re, you know, to go out and then to call people to repentance is to look out, is, is to listen to God. Don't listen to the inner voice or your psychological self, right? Yeah. And the First Corinthians text picks up on this why? Because the time is very short, mm -hmm. right? Um, uh, uh, Paul says um, um, that have no dealings with this present world, for the present form of this world is passing away. A couple of special things on Sunday, um, it's Lutheran Schools Week, and we want to have an emphasis on, on why we have a Lutheran school. And I think the reason why we have a Lutheran school, number one, is because this present world is passing away, and we want to prepare our children for um, the reality of a new life in Christ that they can have, to have them have the scriptures be impressed upon their heart and upon their minds so that as they go out into this world, they're, they're prepared to deal with these things. And life in this world goes quickly. Yeah. I mean, I, you said 1993, I was 1989. Yeah. Doesn't it seem like kind of like yesterday? Yeah. I mean, in some ways, and yet here we are. Um, we tell that to our students and they're like, well, that was a long time ago, right? Yeah. <laughs> Um, By the way, I remember reading an article on you. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> Back in 19, no, it was maybe 1994. Oh, they did a story. They did I a story on the reporter. That little reporter, you yeah. had started a preschool. Mm -hmm. And there was a great growth to that congregation because of the preschool that you had started there. And, mm -hmm. and I think that, that brings to mind Lutheran Schools Week, too. Yeah. And, and um, the great blessing is for our church to have that on, on a, how it brings little fish, so to speak, into yeah. our congregation. Yeah, and it was it was interesting. They were all kind of new, new members, new to the church. So it was it was quite loud in the beginning when you know kids were learning how to um, how to listen, how to how to uh, be a part of the divine service. But they caught on very quickly. Yeah, yeah and yeah. that um, that uh, obviously what we what our profession, our vocation is, is to cast the net out. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't. We're not. Um, we don't. We're not results or strategically doing this right. We just cast the net out and um, the word does its job. When we proclaim the law, the law always convicts, it always kills, it always brings sinners to repentance and the gospel 
heals and forgives and, and bestows life. And we're called to do the Lord's bidding, not our own. So we go where he tells us, right? And, yeah. and um, we're called to follow him. It reminds me of a story, one of those uh, preschool kids, children, uh, was new in our church. And the mom later told me, she said uh, that the, her daughter had said to her, see that guy over there in the black shirt? That's that's the pastor when he puts his dress on, he's Jesus. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and of course, um, it's not a dress. Um, it's, <laughs> and a it's, a, yeah. it's an all, and, it, and I'm not Jesus, but but she understood the Jesus office, that the word, it's the word of God that, that calls us out of darkness and into light. And Jonah was given to learn that, and the people of, of Nineveh, um, they, they repented. And, um, and, and I, that's, what we're, that's what this is all about. You know, it, the other thing that just strikes me about this gospel lesson, it, it's just, you know, John, like, or John Mark likes to use this word immediately. I mean, they just left. <laughs> <I know. laughs> and immediately I, well and I think about that in terms of um, guys going to the seminary you mm-hmm. know it's it's a great commitment to leave a lot of these men that go to the seminary have families and and and, and to go there um, is kind of the same thing mm-hmm. is, is, is to and they went with Jesus and they were in his seminary for for three years yeah and uh, think of the things that they saw during those three years all with his word Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he gives the blind sight. He gives the deaf hearing. He gives the uh, the lame uh, to walk. He brings the dead to life, all with his word. And his word still does that today. I think we we forget that the word is efficacious, and it still does what it says. I got to tell you, um, someone wanted me to visit a, a family member who said, "Is at Sunny Ridge and doesn't um, is, is doesn't believe, Pastor, but." Um, you can say I sent you, but I don't know what's going to happen. And he was very gracious and kind, and he he basically said, I, I've been through so much. His wife had died. He's suffering seizures, and he said, I'm I'm going to die from this, and I can't walk anymore and do anything, so I am have trouble believing in, in, in God. And I said, well, I'm going to be your pastor here, and, and we're going to talk about how God comes to us in Christ, and, and I'm here for a reason. And, you know, by his spirit, I work through his word. That's why I'm here. And um, he's going to give you the antidote to all of this. And I said, you're just going to have to trust him and trust me. And then afterwards, you know, and, and he went to school here. Hmm. And we got to talking and so forth. And, and I said, is it all right if I come back? And he said, yeah. He said, can I have communion? I said, yeah. I mean, he, but he's been away for a long hmm. time. But when you're, when you're separated from the light of the gospel, when mm-hmm. you're when you're in the darkness of all you're focused on is is what's wrong and everything that's been taken away from you, the gospel you know comes from outside of us, mm-hmm. and and God um, um, God comes to us in Christ to to say, hey, yeah, this present form of the world is passing yeah. away, and now He's seeing that, and he, and he, and He was offered more, and He received it, and sometimes we for, you mm-hmm. know it's kind of like when we. When that happens, we're we're surprised. But why are we surprised? The gospel does its thing, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, L- let's. I change my mind on the hymn that we're going to do. Oh, um, okay, <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> um, the hymn of the day is four eleven, and I think um, it, it kind of summarizes these texts in oh, a yeah. way. Um, and I think let's let's do. Um, uh, should we do one and three? Sure. 411, I want to walk as a child of light. I want to walk as a child of the light. I want to follow Jesus. God set the stars to give light to the world. The star of my life is Jesus. In him there is no darkness at all. The night and the day are both alike. The Lamb is the light of the city of God. Shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. I'm looking for the coming of Christ. I want to be with Jesus. When we have run with patience the race, We shall know the joy of Jesus. In him there is no darkness at all. The night and the day are both alike. The Lamb is the light of the city of God. 
Shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you.